time now for the Community Foundation Report. I think that's just the name I just came up with. There you go. That All worked. Right. That worked. <laughs> How you doing, Brian? Pretty good. Good. It's a nice day out there. It is. Uh, 67 degrees, sun shining. I like it. Yeah. Pretty good for August. Hopefully, yeah. that means we'll have good weather for this weekend for the Nickel Plate Art and Music Festival. Looking that way. A little warm, but little warm. not in the yeah. 90s like yeah. it was last year. But lots of good, lots of good things planned for that. We're looking forward to yes. forward to that coming up. Yes. Um, some other things that are going on locally as well. Have you been past the Times Theater in the last I half have. an hour or 45 minutes? Um, or well, not the last 45 minutes, yeah, but uh, about 8.30 this morning yeah. I received a picture of the silver marquee. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, exciting. They were they were working on sandblasting this morning yes. and priming and things are changing around there. We're looking forward to it. Of course, there's even bigger changes on the inside, so it's, yes. it's neat to see that all coming together. So looking forward to having some events, live music, movies, all those fun things there. Oh, yeah. So that'll be fun. So. Hey, a few things we've got going on um, that um, like listeners to pay attention to. Um, of course, the Fulton County Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship applications are currently available. Yes. Um, that deadline is September 1st. Um, if you have a student or are a student that will be graduating at the end of the 2023 school year, it doesn't feel quite right yet to mm -hmm. be saying 2023, mm -hmm. but. We're almost there. Yeah. Um, the application deadline is September 1st. Okay. Um, check it out on our website, nicf.org, and there's a Fulton County Scholarship page. Um, there's some requirements as far as information about academics, community involvement, um, an essay involved in that as well. Um, but um, some, of the, some of the criteria do include things like um, academic performance, um, obviously it was one. Um, but some things that you're involved in, um, community service, work, um, things at school, um, we really want well-rounded students for this. So, um, like I said, the application is due on September 1st, and I had a special note that says, make sure you hit submit on the application. <laughs> oh, oh. So if you have it all filled out, there's a button that says submit. Please make sure you do that before September 1st so that we make sure and get that application. Because if you don't hit submit, we may not get your whole application. So right. just just a special note on that. So, um, something else we've got going on, Women's Giving Circle Grant Applications. Um, this will be the third year that we've been doing video grant applications. So we ask organizations to upload a three to five minute video talking a little bit about their project. Um, get creative. We've had anywhere from drone footage to some kind of man on the street <laughs> footage. Um, videos of, about projects um, and we're accepting those applications. The deadline for those is September 26th. Um, the information is on our website. Um, you can look on our grants page and, and look for the Women's Giving Circle grant application. Um, and it has a spot where you upload the video. There's also a budget page that we ask for on that. And if you have any questions on either of those, don't hesitate to give us a call. 574-224-3223 um, um, and we'll help you work through any questions you have about um, either the Women's Giving Circle grant applications or the um, Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship application. Mm -hmm. So check those out. Um, something else I wanted to put a note out about, um, we are planning another food pantry summit for local um, food pantries. Um, it'll be October 13th. Um, out at Geneva Center. So if you're involved in a food pantry, um, we're, we'll be sending out save the date information here in the near future and then an invitation for that, but um, get that date marked on your calendar. So, okay. Well, this morning we have a couple of special guests with us. Yes. We have um, representatives of the Outlet Youth Center. I got the name right, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, we have with us Taylor Shawley and Jason C. And I'll let you introduce yourself as far as your position. And um, so, Taylor, we'll, we'll let ladies go first. Sure. Uh, so my name is Taylor Shawley. I'm the assistant director at the Outlet Youth Center. Um, I help out our director patients who couldn't be here this morning. She is uh, actually in Indianapolis taking 
a class on financial some fundraising, so mm -hmm. which we felt was important for her to be at. Yes, right, right, yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah so. for sure. For sure. And Jason? Yeah, uh, Jason C. And I uh, serve as president of the uh, on the board there for the, the youth center. And uh, basically whatever patients and Taylor says I need to do, yeah. that's, that's Kind of like be at the radio station. Just be there. Yeah, the yeah make sure I'm there at the right time. Exactly. Okay. So. Well, for somebody that's listening, and <clears throat> this may be the first time they've heard about the Outlet Youth Center, what is the Outlet Youth Center? Yeah. So. I'm going to read to you our mission. So our mission is the Outlet Youth Center is faith-based, youth-driven, community-minded, and strives to provide a safe, structured environment for all Fulton County area youth. Through community partnerships and programming, our hope is to encourage teens and preteens to make positive life choices, which will not only impact their lives, but also the community in which they live. So that's kind of why we're there. We're there for the kids to give them a safe place, to give them a place to come relax, to get help with homework with what they need. Um, I'm, I'll talk about our services. Our after school program, uh, we hold Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 3 to 4.30. Right now it's 4.30 after September, we'll, we'll go to 5.30. Uh, but it's for kids from 6th through 12th grade. They're welcome to come. Uh, we feed them dinner, they have a snack. They uh, can play games, do everything in the center. We have clubs every day. Wednesday, we play chess. We do art. Thursdays, we do STEM. Tuesdays, uh, we have somebody come in who, who teaches them how to cook. We make meals. Um, what else do we do, Jason? We do so much. It seems like a pretty exhaustive list, but they're just, just really just a space, right? Like just yeah. to let them come in and there's pool and air hockey and Sure. a basketball game and a place to sit and read. We've got some couches uh, we do. <laughs> to sit on and just relax. So. Yeah, it's it's not uncommon to walk to the youth center and, and see a student asleep. Uh, so we really do feel like we've made it that safe place where they yeah. feel they can come in and just kind of let go and, and do that. We also have a preschool book club that takes place Friday mornings, 1030. Those are for kids uh, zero to five. And that is independently funded. That doesn't come from our budget. We just kind of hold it. Uh, businesses, individuals sponsor it for $100 a month. And that has grown exponentially. I think the last time we met, we had 35 kids, including, I think, the four or five babies that were there. So. Do I count as a kid if I come to that? Absolutely. I, I act I, like one most of the time. And it's not just reading a book to them, right? Like, there's oh, an yeah. activity, there's a snack, there's, yeah, I mean, do. like, it's a pretty full program. Yep. We do music. It's it's a it's a it's the funnest part of our week. It's yeah. a good time. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the services that you offer for youth. I know that you also offer some services for community members, things like showers and laundry. Maybe talk a little bit about about those services as well. Yeah, we do have a shower facility. Um, so anyone in the community, whether or not you have a student in Fulton County, you can come shower, and and we supply shampoo, conditioner, body soap, uh, towels, anything you need to do that. Uh, we also have laundry facilities, again, for anyone, regardless if you have a student. Uh, you can come do your laundry. Those things are by appointment because you can't be there while students are there. Uh, so if, if they call, reach out to patients, she makes appointments and mm. just helps people out with what they need. And it, it's been neat to see we've been able to work with the Youth Center over the last couple of years. Um, I know you mentioned patients. Is, is in Indianapolis taking some training. You've been able to complete some strategic planning and, and goals for the organization. I guess maybe take this question back a couple of years and direct this to Jason. I know there's been a number of efforts for youth centers or youth organizations, um, but talk to us a little bit about the beginnings of the Outlet Youth Center, where it came from, and kind of some of those goals early on when you were looking at this organization. Sure. Well, the, I think the uh, the driving force was the students. We uh, had a couple um, classes at the school put together a presentation on a, a put a business plan together, and their business plan was a youth center, and it basically mapped out our mission statement was they wanted a safe place where they they could they could call their own, and uh, and so that uh, just started some conversations and uh, there was a couple um, community leaders that had experience with other youth centers in other cities and so we you know just went down that rabbit hole and here we are <laughs> yeah yeah 
in some exciting news, of course, over the weekend, there was a there was a big move. Maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, the owners of Schnabel Tier in Rochester, uh, Chris and Rex Robinson and Max Sut Matt Sutton, graciously decided to donate the Schnabel Tier property to the youth center, which I mean we're still blown away by. I still have moments that you know, how are we here? with this so mm -hmm. just gracious wonderful you're so thankful uh, we moved this Saturday so uh, we got every little last bit out of that old building and it is all in the new building it's organized well I don't even know if it's organized it's chaos in there but <laughs> we're working on getting still finding it. stuff we are yeah. we are yeah. uh, we're working on getting that together to open back up our after school program on September 6th okay so for folks that don't know where that building is, maybe describe the location. Yeah, so that that's back behind uh, Burger King, behind Wendy's. It's on Apache Winning Drive. Edge, yeah, yeah back, back behind Winning Edge. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of tucked back in a corner, but yeah. it's beautiful. It's a good space, some outdoor space. And we're excited to have a yard yeah. and yeah. opens up a lot of opportunities for some yeah. We, uh, you mentioned a, a strategic plan, and we had just completed, um, you know, our next three to five year plan. Uh, first on the list was building. We realized we were outgrowing the building we were in, and uh, you know, really appreciated being downtown and what that looked like. Um, but yeah, uh, Rex and Chris and Matt, gracious, it's it's been incredible, uh, and Rapid View has been a, a a contributor and a donor to our from the beginning. Uh, so we're really, really grateful for their continued support, and uh, yeah, we can mark off building from our strategic plan already. So we feel pretty, yeah. we feel pretty good about yeah. this. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting. I know one question that I've gotten is, well, how do kids get there? And there's some plans going on in the community that I know I've heard commissioners talk about, mm -hmm. and and different folks that that will connect that area as well and, mm -hmm. and you're working on some transportation logistics as well. Um, maybe talk a little bit about some of the specific programs. You mentioned like the cooking yeah. program. I think that's one of the cool things that I've seen. Yeah, so Jessica Ripple comes in and does that with the kids. They love her. Um, Purdue Extension. From Purdue thank you. I wanted to say 4-H, but that wasn't for <laughs> Purdue Extension. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. We we teach them to cook uh, with microwaves. We do meals in a mug, things that they can do on their own. Uh, we do a lot of Instapot meals. We do Crock-Pot meals just because they're a lot easier than, you know, turning on a stove. Maybe also a little more safer than yeah. cooking in an oven on a stove. Well, but. there's probably some students that don't have access to oh, for things sure. like a stove, and a microwave is a useful tool. Yeah, so they do all the yeah. prep. They they make it and they share it with the whole center once, once mm -hmm. they're done cooking it. Yeah. So we do that. Um, on Wednesdays we do art club right now. Uh, it's just kind of Patience and I running that, which is great. We just do arts and crafts time, just some fun things. Um, and Doug Morton actually comes in also on Wednesdays and runs a chess club. Okay. And the kids love Doug. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. He comes in and they're Doug and they're running back to do to do chess. He's, yeah. he's pretty cool. And yeah. then Thursdays we do STEM, um, which I have nothing to do with. <laughs> it is, it's a lot to me. So I just kind of, I a hang lot of out. Parts. Yeah. yeah, they often yeah. do that. But we've got a 3D printer that somebody donated us that we use. Uh, we have, we do these marble runs where they have to build, but there's certain rules where you can only use this many tracks and get the marble down in this amount of time. And okay. Mm. So. Sounds like fun. There's like those yeah. pens too that have, I don't know, they... Oh yeah, we do the 3D, 3D pens. pens. They love those. It's incredible stuff. Yeah. Well, you mentioned some of these programs and we were talking before the program about volunteers being key to this. So if somebody's listening and says, hey, I want to volunteer, how, do we, how would they go about doing that? Maybe some requirements, how they start the process? For sure. Uh, so we could not do what we do without volunteers. I mean, Truly, it would be a disaster if we didn't have them. <laughs> um, we are our biggest volunteers. Volunteers are Stephen, Gerald, and Hines. Um, they truly run parts of the center that patients and I don't even have to touch or ask about because we know that they they take care of it. You know, the kids know them. They love them. They just do so much for us, and we just I know I want to take this opportunity to just thank them 
and let everyone know that they've been incredible. But if you, if you want to volunteer, there's a ton of opportunities. Um, you know, if you don't want to be with kids, we need somebody to pick up the recycling. Uh, if you don't want to be with kids, we need somebody to help to clean. Uh, patients could always use some help just with like some office stuff. Um, but I know that people sometimes are afraid of kids, but they're amazing. I mean, they are. Um, I always tell people, if you, they just want an interest. If you show them an interest, they do all of the work for you. Um, they just want someone to talk to, to get to know, um, and just to receive love from. Um, so if you want to volunteer, you know, just an hour a week, you don't even have to stay the whole time. Uh, you do need to fill out a background check because we do have minors in the building. Um, and then there's there's a brief little training process that patients takes you through, but, but it's not much at all. Uh, I will tell you right now, <clears throat> as we're moving, <coughs> excuse me, we don't know where the phone is. <laughs> 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 so if you'd like to reach out, email is the best way. And our email is uh, outletucenter at gmail.com. So if you reach out to us, I know we've had some people reach out to us kind of before our move that we're waiting to bring in until we reopen. Yeah. So, but, but please consider volunteering because it's an incredible thing to be a part of. Um, and I think it's just as beneficial to the volunteers as it is to the kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing I want to mention before I forget about the move, uh, we rented the wrestling, the wrestlers, mm -hmm. and we had 13, 15, Thir 13. 13 kids. I'll tell you what, that was a res they were respectful, they were hardworking, and uh, I think we would still be lifting heavy things oh gosh. if we didn't have them. So yeah. just I heard there was some angst about moving a pool table ahead of time. And <laughs> that was the first thing they grabbed, and yeah. I, they walked it right out. We were trying to figure out how to take it apart, and they yeah. just literally picked it up, put it on a trailer, yeah. it was done. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to the kids for that. There was one point on Saturday that between our two locations, we had 50 people helping out. Wow, that's which, amazing. And we got it all done in four or five hours. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, something else I wanted to make sure we mentioned today is you guys have a matching opportunity. Yes. I don't know if this has been kind of out in the public much. I know there's been some donations already, but maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we, we've been presented this awesome opportunity. Um, this person graciously donated funds to us to buy a 15 passenger van so we can pick kids up from school and take them home. Uh, and they also gave us this opportunity that said, hey, if you can get more support in from your community, if you can raise $50,000, we'll give you an extra $25,000. So we, were, we said, okay. heck yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so we actually have already raised 18000 without going, going public with that. So we're about halfway there already. So if folks are interested in donating, yes. can't call you yet because you don't know where the Don't call is. us. We don't know where the phone is. <laughs> But tell us, tell us a little bit if they if they want to get involved, whether it be donating, whether it be volunteering to help with things around the building, or volunteering during the programs. Um, remind us again how somebody would go about getting in contact with you. Yeah. So if you would like to donate, uh, if you want to just send a check in to our PO box, it's PO box two eight six here in Rochester. We also have a donate page on our website where you can donate online. And our website is theoutletyouthcenter.org. And there's a little donate tab there at the top. You can choose to give a one-time gift. You can choose to give monthly. You can, there's a lot of options on there on how you want to give. Um, but yeah, right now we can't find the phone. So if you need anything else, <laughs> <laughs> any questions, anything at all, you can actually reach out to us on our Facebook page. We read those messages often and, and email patients at... Uh, outletyoucenter at gmail.com. Well, we're talking with um, Taylor Shelley and Jason C. from the Outlet Youth Center. Um, anything you want to leave folks with as we wrap up our conversation? Um, gosh. We are going to be open September the 6th. Yes. Or we'll yeah. open back up and should have everything back in order and the phone should be found, uh, we hope, uh, by then. But um, just we are so grateful for the support we've received and the um, the impact that we're already making on our youth and uh, be able to engage that um, and let them know that we're out here and we care about them and uh, so we're grateful to be able to do what we do yes absolutely i always tell people um, if you can make a kid feel 
worthy of love and know that they're loved. Everything else stems from that. Yeah. If they love their self, they're going to try harder on their homework. If they love themselves, they're going to make their community a better place. If they know that they're worth more than what the world tells them that they are, mm -hmm. yeah. then we've done our job. Well, on behalf of the community and, and all the folks that benefit from this, I'd like to say thank you to you and all yes. the volunteers, the board, um, the staff that make this project work. It's It's been a, a big thing. I know I've seen at least two or three efforts in the past that, that never got to the point that it is now, and it, it's really awesome to see this. So, so thank you. Again, we've been speaking with um, Taylor Shally and Jason C. of the Outlet Youth Center. Um, they've moved. They're raising funds. They could use some volunteers. Yeah, reach all out. All of the above. Um, give us the contact information one more time. Sure. Uh, our website, theoutletyouthcenter.org. I will just give you that. If you go there, you can get anything. Our uh, our email address, our address, our mailing address. Uh, you know, check out our Facebook page. We're very active on there. If you want to see pictures of what we're doing with the kids, the things that we need, uh, we try to share a lot on there. Yeah. So yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having thanks, us. Brian. Appreciate being here. Just a couple of reminders as we wrap up. Women's Giving Circle grant applications, video grants. Um, those are due September 26th. Um, coming up closer than that is the Fulton County Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship. That application is due September 1st. Um, and if you have questions on either of those, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always get us by phone, 574-224-3223, um, online, nicf.org, or you can stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any questions or ideas that you may have for our community. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Brian. And uh, thank you, Taylor and uh, Jason, for stopping by. And we appreciate everything you guys are doing, and Brian, we appreciate what you guys are doing as well. Thanks for having us. We'll Thank talk you. to you again in a month.